Welcome back to the Fit Dad Club podcast. My name is Travis Jones and I'm here with Jason Barrett. Jace, how are you doing today, buddy? Doing fantastic. Our Perth heat wave is gone. It's uh, done. We're no more 40 degree days, just uh, just 30 degree days, which is wonderful. Uh, and I hit a PB in a 5K yesterday, so I'm doing, uh, I'm doing good. How are you, Trav? I'm good, mate. You're smashing it. Well, for me, I feel like we have the Tasmanian heat wave because uh, it's 34 degrees today. And it doesn't normally get to 34 degrees in Tasmania. Right. Uh, so it's, uh, is, everyone is complaining and everyone says it's too hot down here. But today, mate, we are talking about the eight things that you need to fix to have a better quality of life. You can reframe, and we were talking about this uh, before the episode, to what to call it. It's like eight things that are ruining your life or eight things you need to stay away from to improve your life. Either way, today we are talking about the eight things that you shouldn't be doing if you want a great quality of life. And we're just going to leave it at that. So listen to these eight things. You need to get away from these eight things if you want to be the best version of yourself. Um, and I, I, one of them is like your ego is killing you, right? So I want you to come into this podcast um, with a humble mindset, okay? Get some humility about you and go, well, maybe, maybe I am experiencing one, two, or more of these things inside my life, and I can listen to how I can improve them to have a better quality of life. So that is point five, but we will start at point one. And I think that one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that's ruining most people's lives or holding them back from success is you're just a fucking snowflake. Um, and I say it like that because a lot of people fold, right? They fold faster than an origami expert. Um, because, you know, when we look at this, you know, times it t if some form of pressure is placed upon you when you're trying to um, deploy a certain set of behaviors, you give up. You just, you go, no, it's too hard. I'm going to fold these new behaviors. I'm going to default back to my um, previous version of me because I don't like hard things. I want it to be easy. Um, when in life, you know, you can't be fragile, right? You need to uh, embark on a journey, understanding it's going to be hard, understand that you're going to have resistance because all change means you're going to be met resi with resistance. And when you receive this resistance, you're not going to break easily. Like, well, I mean, think of the word fragile. It's like it breaks easy, easy, handle with care. Like you, you shouldn't be someone that I have to handle with care when I talk to you. And hence calling you a snowflake if this is you. Like if you are offended by that, well, you probably are a snowflake. Um, you know, we, we, we want it. We don't, I don't want to handle you with care. I want to hold the mirror up to your face. I want to make you robust. And I don't even want you to make you robust where I can throw you around a little bit. I want to, every time I hit you in the face, you get stronger. And that is anti-fragile. Every single time you have an obstacle in front of you, you don't break. You don't only withstand the, the force of that obstacle, but you get stronger. You learn from that punch in the face to duck weave bob move however the um, dodgeball guys said it back in that movie and you learn from it and you keep moving forward i think that is the biggest thing it's learning from mistakes and becoming anti-fragile is the, the the key element to achieving success in your life yeah it's it's about not being not being brittle and i think a lot of guys mistake being hard um, with being anti-fragile, but it's not the case. Like mm. glass is hard, right? But it's brittle. It's fragile. You, you, you know, you knock it the wrong way and it shatters, right? So you, by always constantly trying to be hard or like trying to sort of focus on, on developing hardness, right? Uh, you know, get, unless you're on Viagra, that's a different story. Um, this is not what it's about. It's, it's about, as Trav was saying, you want to be able to sort of absorb the impact of life and flow around it and be like water, right? Like Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, be water, my friend. That's what you want to focus on being. And I know a lot of people like the, the phrase fragile, um, fragile uh, snowflake is probably a little bit triggering for some people. Again, we talked about triggering, I think it was last week on, the, on that one. So if you're triggered by it, go back to last week and listen to that one. Um, but when it comes to the idea of oh, it's snowflake or whatever, people use it in such um, weird ways, right? And it's always it's always, it's designed to be a bit of an insult for a lot of people these days. Um, but it's not necessarily the case. It's just understanding. All right, well, like if you let other people's opinions and other people's lives and the way that they like to live it get to you that much, then yeah, you are a bit of you are a bit fragile. You are a bit of a snowflake. You're letting in outside influence way too much. So as a, as another point to add to this, I would say that in order for you to be anti fragile, you've other people's opinions and the way that other people do shit has got to be like water off a duck's back. 
I used to be someone who got so fucking worked up and so involved in like what other people doing were from a, a health and fitness standpoint in terms of like, oh, they're promoting keto diets and I know that that's scientifically not the best and da, da, da. and this person's talking about fucking alkalinity and how that's the solution, everything. And I've, got to, I've got to be get into it. And look, I, w- I wasn't convincing fucking anyone on that side of the argument because they're already too far gone for a lot of the people. If they're already posting about that sort of stuff, having a fucking Facebook argument with them isn't going to do anything. But I was getting myself so worked up about it because I was like, oh, it's wrong and they need to be corrected with the science. And that was the way that I felt for a while. But I was I was being easily triggered. I was being a bit of a snowflake. I was letting other people's opinions get to me and affect my mood. And other people's shit that other people was doing that wasn't even directed at me affect me. So when you are considering becoming anti fragile, becoming malleable and adaptable, um, number one, remembering that life is always random. There's always randomness that happens, right? This is the problem. If the wind shifts and something changes, oh no, what was me? I wasn't able to get my workout in. That only wait. The only time I scheduled it in was for tonight, and I didn't realize that. My kids had sport on. Oh, no, it's all fucked. I'm going to go eat a pizza. That's fragile, right? Your plans and your goals are fragile if the smallest change takes you off that course. So part of being anti-fragile is being adaptable and being willing to roll with the punches and being malleable, being more like Play-Doh than, than glass, right? It's like you punch Play-Doh, it's just like, oh, well, what else have you got for me, sir? Uh, I'm just going to turn into a shape of your fist. Oh, that looked cool. All right, watch me turn into a basketball, right? Like, be like Flubber. That's it's much, much better. So uh, be Flubber without the flub. Right, it's, yeah, it's exactly. that's the uh, that's the balance. Your, your emotional resilience needs to be like flubber. Your body like iron. That's, that's what we're. Yeah, about. I love it. Iron sharpens iron. But I think when we're looking at this, yeah. mate, like I completely agree that you know you need to be anti fragile with your plans, right? But to have that, you need to have a power of agency. So you need to have the belief within yourself that you are capable of achieving. And you're capable within yourself to control your direction of where you're going as well. So, yeah, like sometimes you, you have kids, okay? They're, you know, you have to pick them up from school when you, they're sick. There's something that runs longer than it should have. You know, so many things are going to happen. But you're like, well, I'm fragile. My plan has been broken. Therefore, I cannot do my plan. Anti-fragile with your plan. If something breaks then you become malleable and you keep going. You adjust the plan. You know, you, you have the ability to go from, you know, plan A to plan B to plan C. You have all the letters of the alphabet and you go, well, you know what? I'm going to go for a 2K run at nighttime. I'm just going to do my minimum um, effort today and I'm going to do it at nine o'clock. I, I'm just going to get it done because that's who I am. You know, that that just like me. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, you know, it's, it's not being, there is no, you're either a snowflake or a rock. Like that's not what it is, but there is, you're either fragile or you're anti-fragile. So I want you to be anti-fragile with your emotions and with your workouts and with your nutrition. Every time that you feel like you slipped up in a way, you need to learn and you need to become stronger and need to develop a plan for it not to happen again. I was having this, this conversation with Jax regarding his emotions um, on Tuesday and he was like, oh, I was at soccer and they've got all these kids together with all different age groups. And it's like, they said that I was a crybaby, like the older kids. And they said that, you know, I can't kick goals and I can't do this. And, um, you know, he was like, and guess what? I kicked four goals out of the five goals today and our team won. I was like, oh, that's really good, man. But I think what happened was also you let other people's words like challenge your emotions and he got down for a bit and he was stewing on it afterwards. You have to understand Jackson. I think this is for everyone out there. It's like anyone says anything to you. If I call you a snowflake, you give meaning to that. I don't give meaning to it. You give meaning to it. Okay. So any, and I was saying to him, I was like, mate, if someone calls you a loser, if someone says you're a crybaby, if someone says you're crap at soccer, if someone says anything, all that is, is words coming out of someone else's mouth, but you have to place meaning on that. If you start to go, oh, maybe I'm crap, or maybe I'm a loser, or maybe it's like, then you're giving the meaning. You're, you're dictating the emotions you're choosing. Or, again, water off a duck's back, just let it p- flow past you. Like, opinions are like assholes, right? Everyone has one. You just have to, you know, brush their opinions to the side, be true within yourself. And that's what I was saying to him. And just like, just stay focused and essentially stoic. I didn't use that word with him, but you're staying stoic with your emotions and steadfast with 
your plan of attack on how you were going to perform for the day and for the week. And I think that's the true anti-fragility of what we're trying to approach here. Yeah. Just get, um, get Jax on some Marcus Aurelius, uh, audio <laughs> exactly. quotes at night. I think, uh, I think he'll, he'll, he'll be fine. As it, it just reminds me of the, um, yeah, there's, there's a Bluey episode as well um, where they like uh, Bingo is getting kind of bullied, kind of not at kindergarten. Uh, sorry, Bingo. Yeah, Bingo was like, oh, this this new kid called me a bobo head. He's like, oh, well, did you go to the teacher? And he's like, yeah. Uh, she's like, yeah, I did. Uh, and then she said, well, Bingo, are you a bobo head? And I was like, well, no. And she said, well, well, there you go. I was like, all right. <laughs> so it was like, it's yeah, as simple uh, as I mean, that. This is a uh, for all the uh, all the bluey, bluey, yeah, all the bluey watching parents out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like it, you you are the one who decides the meaning, right? So you can either give something a positive meaning or a negative meaning when it comes, and even if it is like harsh criticism and you feel like it is accurate it's like all right well even if that is applicable it's like oh hey how could i improve on this right you almost take it with the uh the the positive grains out of it even if it's wrapped in a negative package is the most powerful thing you can do to be anti-fragile is to be aware of all right well where the where are the grains of truth in this criticism where could i actually Mm. improve uh how can i take this as feedback to get better and to work on myself rather than uh, you know most people will take an innocent comment defensively and, and sort of respond from a negative place but if you can take a harsh comment and go actually hang on you know what there's some validity in this like there's a little bit of of you know what i could have i could have passed a little bit better i was a bit selfish i got a bit tunnel visioned you know there towards the end trying to score a goal and i lost it for us or whatever right? obviously you know this isn't the conversation you have in jacks but as adults like yeah I, I did get a little bit tunnel vision I apologize for that um like like i understand maybe i need to keep my mind a bit more open and work on it thanks like i appreciate that that's the easiest way, number one, to disarm anyone who is being critical because they never expect you to take it positively. But then, you know, th- this is it. You scan it for validity. You sift it to see if there's any gold nuggets in there because sometimes, you know, people are just fucking, they'll say shit just to rile you up as well, especially if you're dealing with like older kids and you're in school. Like, yeah, they're just, they're just going to yeah. talk shit for the sake of it. Um, but it's like if you, as especially as an adult, you take the ability to sift it, especially in like you know, work environments, that kind of stuff. You sift it for gold nuggets. If there are any, awesome. If not, move on. That's all you need. That's all it needs to be. I completely agree. It's like you you have to understand where the where the criticism is coming from. Like if I called you a fat slob, um, then you can go, "Well, am I?" And you have to look at the data. And I was like, "Well, I'm 20 kilos overweight. I have food all over my face. My environment's pretty crap. Well, maybe you are a fat slob." Okay, I can change this. And you go, you can take that comment. Oh, he's being negative, or he's helping me. Okay, he's actually trying to give me the reality that I'm one of the other things that we lie to ourselves a lot of the times, but he's helping hold up the mirror and giving me truth. Now, it might not be in um, nice uh, words and he didn't coddle me um, to give me the exact uh, verbiage that I wanted or articulate it the way I liked, but he told me the truth. And I think also in society, in saying that, the reason why a lot of us are snowflakes is because we don't get told the truth anymore. Everyone's so worried about making sure everyone is happy and pleasant and pleased and no one's um, feeling triggered or anything like that. I know we said that word last week, I'm not going to get into it, but they don't feel negative about the words that we use when in reality, sometimes like, you know, if you're, if you're giving up too easy, like you need to be told you're giving up too easy and you can be better. Like it's okay to tell someone, hey, you can be better, become more anti-fragile. That's what you need. The the second one, which is, you know, holding you back from success and somewhat deteriorating the quality of your life is you give into that inner bitch voice way too much. Essentially, you give into your inner bitch. Um, And we all know that we have two people on our shoulders. We have the inner boss and then we have the inner bitch. And the inner boss is like your cheerleader. You know, it's the, it's the like, you can do this. Let's, you know, get on this diet. Let's get the training plan in. And the inner boss for a lot of people always talks about doing things in the future. Um, and it's the loudest. It's like, yeah, let's start the diet on Monday. Let's join that gym and sign up for this. You know, because it's, you don't, it doesn't worry about the current you. Okay, this is for a lot of people. And then the inner bitch is the loudest in the present situation because it wants the instant gratification. So what happens is like the inner boss is like, yep, let's go to the gym on Monday morning. I'm going to set my alarm for 4.30 a.m. because I need to get it done before the kids get up. And then 4.30 a.m. on a Monday morning rolls around and your inner bitch, you know, speaks up. It's like, hey, it's cold outside. 
Um, or, hey, you're tired, just press snooze, just press snooze one more time. And you press snooze three times, and all of a sudden you say to yourself, oh, I can't go now because it's too late. And you skip the workout altogether because you've talked yourself out of it um, and you didn't give yourself now the adequate time to go work out. Or, it, you know, you haven't, it's an all or nothing um, mentality because reality is if you skip the workout and you can't get to the gym because you press snooze three times, you could just go out there and just go a two kilometer run and out the front door and straight back. But you're not because you're looking at the, the instant gratification rather than the future self. The more that we can silence our inner bitch um, and listen to our inner boss version of us, the less it's like talking to the future and the more it's talking to the current version of you. It's like it's like stacking it up, right? The more you go, you know what? My inner boss says wake up at 4.30 right now and it's 4.30 in the morning and you get up. Like that's a vote. And the more you listen to the inner boss, the louder they become and the more silenced your inner bitch comes. Although more, it doesn't mean they, they never go away, right? They, ne they never are completely gone. There is an inner bitch inside every single one of us who likes comfort and um, pastries and, and, you know, laying on the couch watching Netflix, but that doesn't help us become the best version of us. Um, that will slowly deteriorate you from your potential if you keep falling prey to the inner bitch version of you. But we just need to listen to it. And it's like, as soon as you listen to that inner boss and you're like, yep, that's just like me. I did the job. And then the next day you do it again. And the next day you do it again. If you start stacking these wins, you transform your identity from someone who can consistently presses snooze or listens that inner bitch more and more and more to someone who can drive past a KFC without altering a double zinger burger. You know, some people, they drive past the KFC and it's like, oh, I saw a KFC, I had to buy it. And it's like, no, you didn't have to do anything. But the inner bitch says, you're hungry. You drove past the KFC, have a double zinger. You know you want it. Whereas the inner boss will start to take over after enough times of um, restraining from that. And you don't even think about it anymore. It becomes that sort of... Um, unconscious competence as we go through the um, unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence um, spectrum. But I, I think if we look at this, you need to complain less. You need to listen to your boss a little bit more. And like, guys, the world is definitely not out to get you. And I think that's what happens a lot of the time when we listen to our inner bitch. Mm, yeah, it's it's very much victim mentality at the end of the day, right? We talk about this. There's so many different ways to phrase this kind of inner battle. There's the victim and the victor. And it is exactly what we talked about even before. It's like not taking on board the outside world as the like, like not giving meaning to it. Because as humans, we are meaning making machines. We can either make the meaning of, oh, the world is out to get me. Or we can make the meaning of, oh, you know, this is all happening for me, right? Is the world, is things happening for you or to you? Are you just like a fucking, uh, a bar, like a cow in a hurricane, right? In those movies where the tornado goes around and there's always a fucking cow floating around. Is that you? And you're just like, oh, life's happening to me, right? Hopefully you're a buff cow, right? And you can just like fucking get back down on the ground because you're dense. Um, Lock yourself in. <laughs> um, exactly. Lock yourself in. Just like brace, brace your core and then the, uh, the tornado can't lift you. Um, but the other thing that we can do, right? We can, we can pause positively reinforce it's like a dog you want to positively reinforce you know every time you make that in a boss decision right just like me and you want to negatively reinforce every time you make the inner bitch decision or even when it comes up like last night i went for i got yeah i did my, my pb 5k it was um, i think it was like 28 minutes and something so comfortably below the half an hour mark i was thinking all right if someone kidnapped my family and told me i had to get somewhere five kilometers away in half an hour I could do it, right? I, I win. It. I win that, that competition. No one do it for 25 minutes yet. I just need a bit more time. <laughs> um, but there was times during that where I was like, oh, maybe I should slow down a bit or maybe I should oh, like, get a little bit of a stitch or just I'm feeling a bit... And then my immediate response in my head was, nah, fuck that. And it's like, that's just my immediate response whenever that little inner bitch voice or that like, oh, you're doing these sleds or oh, you committed to doing this High Rocks event in Perth in September, which I'm putting it out there now. Um, oh, but yeah, these things seem hard. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Nah, fuck that. It's like, oh, that sled seems really heavy. Nah, fuck that. I'm just going to finish. Even if, uh, if it, I'm just not going to quit. I'm just going to say, nah, fuck that every time it comes up. And so it just becomes an immediate like dismissal almost of someone just saying something stupid. And that's what it becomes. And then every time it comes up, you go, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna, just going to do it. Um, it. So having an automatic response when you do something awesome and you praise yourself. And as mm. well, when you're that little negative voice does come up, having something to say back to it as an automatic response is so important. It's called a pattern interrupt. If you don't yep. interrupt that pattern, then what happens is you've got 
oh, I hit snooze. Oh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't do do do. Because while you're busy thinking something, you can't be thinking something else. So if you take control of your thoughts and you go, nah, fuck that. I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it. I'm not doing the lay in bed, whatever. I'm going to get up. If you take control of your thoughts, and this is why the five second rule by Mel Robin works, right? As soon as he's got to do something, you go five, four, three, two, one, and then you do it because while you're counting down, you can't think about anything else. You can't bring up your excuses and start justifying and start going, oh, but I'm tired and this and that. So taking control of your thoughts and having something that you default to, whether it is just going, all right, it's like jumping in the cold pool, five, four, three, two, one, jump, and then you've got no time to talk yourself out of it. Same thing with just saying, nah, fuck that. Every time it comes up, you just brush it away like a like an annoying moth and you're just like you know nah, fuck off get out of here no one wants you shoe fly don't bother me that sort of stuff and and honestly mate by saying that as well you're expanding your comfort zone because you you know every time you push harder let's say you know i'm sure that you know as you're increasing your running those thoughts would have come up at a six minute kilometer pace right but now they don't even come up at that six minute kilometer pace anymore. It's like, okay, I'm down to like a That's five chill. twenty, five thirty. Yeah, it's like it's like so what happens is because you continue to say, no, nah, fuck that, what happens, you expanded your comfort zone and you became anti fragile essentially. So you're becoming a bigger, better, more potential version of you, continuing to push harder, push fa- faster. But if we constantly gave in and you're like, Oh, it's you know, six minute kilometers, I ran thirty minutes for my five K and you, you didn't push through the this is hard, I must give up um, phase, you'll never get faster. You'll never become better. So I think we have to understand it's the ability to silence the inner bitch is the ability to become the best version of you. Because as you always push harder, you always will become better. And as you become better, you will always have that inner bitch saying, oh my gosh. And, you know, I was talking to one of the guys, um, he's been training with me for, you know, just over a year and a half in the gym. He's like, man, is this ever get easier? It's like, no, like you just get better. So we make it harder. Like it, it just, it, the, the level of comfort is always just outside your comfort zone. You're always going to be pushing. You're always going to be striving to become the next best version of yourself. And yeah, like that might be tiring at times, right? You know, trying to strive for your form of excellence for you. But, you know, we're on this planet to progress, right? To have purpose, to continue to move forward. And, you know, for my kids, I don't want to, oh, I can can walk now. I don't need to run anymore. I don't need to run. It's like, no, you learned how to walk. Now you can learn how to run, right? Like we keep progressing. I can crawl now. I don't need to walk. Do I dad? No, you need to learn how to walk. Like life is better as you continue to progress because you're hitting, you're giving yourself milestones and accomplishments and with accomplishments comes fulfillment and we want to feel fulfilled like you know if i gave you a million dollars and you never had to work again and you had no problems you know you'd think that would be the, the best thing ever it's like no like we we need problems and we need challenges in our life because if we don't have hard days we'll we will never appreciate the good days like we never appreciate the days that you know we we achieved the success because you know if I think that's the biggest thing. It's like we need the hard because in the hard, we appreciate the not so hard and you have to walk through the mud to get to that. I think that's that, people yeah, miss the, Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's yeah, I completely agree. It's like you can't have shadow without light. Or you can't have light without shadow. It's like if everything was all great all the time, it's like, yeah, you, you've got no context for your life. And yeah, you've got, you've got to have difficult times. And it's why a lot of the people who achieve greatness often go through hard shit. It's not like a prerequisite, but they go through hard stuff and they've got that context of like, nah, fuck, I never want to be in this position again. Um, and so they've got that, that light and shade and that context. So you've got to have contrast in your life, like expecting things to be great all the time. It's like, yeah, things eventually can always work out for you. And that's definitely the mentality and things are always for the greater good. Um, but it's like, it doesn't mean that hard shit and random shit's not going to happen, but yeah, you've got to have contrast. Yeah. I remember I was uh, I probably bastardized this. I was at a Tony Robbins, um, seminar, one of them, and he was talking about, you know, this, this guy passes away and he wakes up and he's in Vegas. And every single time he goes down from his hotel room down to, you know, the blackjack table, he's like, oh, you win 21, 21, 21. And he never loses a hand, right? And he goes and eats his caviar and has his sushi. He goes up there, there's, you know, three models laying in his bed waiting to sleep with him. And he goes to sleep, wakes up again, goes downstairs, win 21, you win, you win. Uh, and then he goes back up, there's models there. And he does this. Uh, for a couple of weeks and then like he, he sees God and he's like oh am I in heaven um, and he's like no you're in hell right 
Uh, I think because if you all you ever do, like you might be thinking that's ridiculous. That sounds like heaven, but it's not. If you never have a challenge and all you ever have is like the good and you never have this equilibrium because of, you never have this balancing act of like, okay, I need to keep pushing. I need to become better um, because, you know, that's where, you know, we will start to, I guess, dissipate or we start to become fragile. We, we don't strive any further to, to grow and to become better. So I, I think for everyone out there, if you feel like walk, you're walking through mud right now, uh, listen to the inner boss and just you just have to take one more step every single day. It's like, oh, I'm not where I want to be financially or I'm not where I want to be um, physically. It's like, yeah, well, you're on the journey. Just take one more step. If you keep walking forward with a, a wavering hope that you will get there eventually, the person that you're becoming by just taking another step every single day is much more worthy than the abs anyway. But if you do keep on walking and you're not complaining and you're not fucking bringing everyone else around you down um, and you're also trying to lift them up and you're striving for your best version of you, it's only a matter of time that the best version of you will be there as well. You know, you wake up in a year's time, you're like, fuck, I did this. And then you keep walking again um, to the next best version of you. Um, the, the third reason, the re third thing that's like holding you back is, you know, it's very similar and we sort of... Um, pushed into this it's like you're always looking for the reasons why you can't do something you know we, we've talked about in the past it's like some people have a problem for every solution and you how you need to have a solution for every problem you know you're always looking for the reason why now is not a good time to start the diet why now is not a good time to do the gym why now you can't train today why now you have to overeat on your food why now that you know, it's easy for other people because they're lucky or you're a gym person because that's how it's easy for you. I have seven kids. Like, dude, one of my guys lost 30 kilos. He has seven kids. I was like, man, like that's intense. Seven, I get, ha, high five out there to all the parents with seven kids because that's quite intense. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't know. Do you have like three or four and then all of a sudden you, the, the other four is like, you raise the rest. Um, I, can't, I don't know how that works because I feel like that's a very intense. But if you can have seven kids and keep going forward and still achieve goals, like that's a very, I, I tip my hat to you all. But like, I, I think if we look at this, like you can always find reasons on why you can't do something. If you look for it hard enough, you will find the reason, right? And I think, you know, some of us, our default is finding the reason, okay? So we're, we're defaulting to why we can't do something rather than defaulting to why we can do something or why we should do something. Because, you know, you're not hard done by, you know, you might believe you can, but maybe you had to go through that situation, okay? Maybe that challenge was for you to make you become the best version of you. You needed to be humbled or you needed something to happen. And, you know, yep, if, you, if your kid's sick or, or anything like that, no, no one has to go through this. But, you know, general punches in the faces in your life, yeah, we all have to go through them so we can deal with, have some form of humility, so we can learn from our mistakes, so we can increase our skill set, so we can develop a form of grit and resilience. We can deepen our discipline. Like that's why we go through these challenges. So if you're faced with a challenge right now, rather than looking for the reason why you can't keep going, rather like look for the reason why you can, right? Have Start having the solutions for the problems that you're facing instead. Mm, yeah, I think a lot of people get so caught up and we're so used to looking for the problems is kind of the the challenge. Like as, as humans, we need to understand that evolutionary, we're designed to kind of look for danger because you know, we're, we're, you know, we've, we've been hunted for a little while. We're not, you know, there's, there's bigger animals out there than us. There's fucking grizzly bears and polar bears and shit like that. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's dingoes. We've got to be aware of, of threats and you've got to kind of be looking for danger and looking for how to avoid danger. And the problem is a lot of people can get caught up in that mentality. And it usually comes from, from a young age, right? You get taught like life is hard and you've got to work hard and shit happens and it's all bad and you've got to just fucking deal with it. And, oh no, you can't do this because this person to flog because of this and so you just get drilled into this like negative mindset instead of this what if positive mindset you get drilled into it's um you know you can't it's again as Travis saying it's like your story it's this this blanket you've got around you it's like oh well you know I'm I'm just an Aussie battler I've got a battle who am I if I'm not battling what if things were easy um if things were easy then uh, you know oh, just I wouldn't have to struggle and if I didn't have to struggle fuck I don't know what I would do what would I complain about 
right? So for a lot of people, it is it is this this just this kind of blanket, this safety net almost that they've got. Um, because if you keep looking for all the reasons why you can't, then you never have to test yourself. You never have to put yourself out there. You never have to try. You never have to, to um, I guess, risk yourself or be vulnerable in any way. Yeah, me committing to doing this uh, this high rocks in, in September. Yeah, it's a little bit vulnerable. Like, fuck, it's going to be a bit hard. Uh, I, could, I could look for all the reasons why I can't. My, uh, my wall ball has to squat below parallel and I suck at squatting below parallel because of my lower back and my hips and all these other things. Um, burpee broad jumps, I did about 10 and I fucking was gassed and I've got to do like 80 meters worth of them. And I was just like, all right, well, those are all reasons why I can't. That's all well and good, but it's not going to stop me. I can't, I can't just not do it now. So I'm just going to do it. Fuck it. I'm going to have to. You can look for plenty of reasons why not to do something. Over and over again, you can. There's there's so many ways that you can find those things, um, but you've got to realize that a lot of the time it's just to try and keep yourself safe. And it's like, all right, well, if I'm not just mm. playing it safe, because what am I really afraid of personally? It's getting up there, doing it, and then what if I do it and then I like I gas out and I can't do it anymore, and I'm like I'm fucked and I have to lie down there or I throw up and I'm done and I can't even finish. It's like. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, people probably are like, fuck, that guy pushed himself so hard he passed out or he threw up in the trash can and he couldn't continue. Cool. I, like, I don't think I'll get to that point, but that's like the worst that would happen. Still would probably be like, oh, bro, like, yeah, these really, really fit guys finished, but you see that guy that uh, that passed out and threw up? Like, fuck, he pushed himself pretty hard. Like, <laughs> yeah, cool. That, that's, that's the worst thing that can actually happen. So instead of just thinking, oh, I've got to keep myself safe or people are going to be judging me or whatever, it's like even if I came last out of all the competitors... Like that's still better than the thousand people that are there spectating, not actually doing it. Like none of them actually entered. Exactly. So it's the same, the same thing about being in the arena. And that's, I think the biggest thing that people are afraid of and why they, they play safe and they look mm. for the reasons why they can't, because it's like, if the more reasons I find why I can't, no one's going to question me. No one's going to like force me to get, to put myself out there and, and risk being judged. 100% mate. It's, it's easy to um, comment on other people from the sidelines, right? But we are on the, in the arena or on the battlefield or in the Herox, Herox games and like you're the one doing the work and the only person that can actually judge you is yourself. I don't care if you're doing the war balls and you end up shitting yourself, Chase, like that's okay. Mm. Um, it's, it's all good, mate. <laughs> that could I'll, be the I'll worst a, thing that happens. Yeah, I'll have a coffee before I go. I'll wear my brown pants. It's all right. <laughs> um, but guys, like I, I, I want you to shift to the fine, shift from looking for the reasons why you can't but most of the time, all the reasons why you can't do something should be the exact reason why you should do it. And I think that's the funny thing. Um, it's like, I can't do this because I don't have enough energy. Okay, that's why you definitely should do this. Oh, I can't do the High Rocks Challenge because, uh, or compete at High Rocks because uh, like, I might not be ready for that. And like, I have to do all these different modalities that I'm not used to. Okay, that's the exact reason why you should be doing this. If something um, somewhat scares you and it's safe, this is not like, oh, I shouldn't jump off a cliff. Okay, well, he said challenge, I should challenge myself. Like, don't do dumb things, um, but you should definitely do hard things. Because by doing hard things, that's where we grow. And the reasons why you say you shouldn't do it are normally the reasons why, exactly the reasons why you should. Uh, the next point that's holding you back is you just hang around people that aren't pulling you forward. Like you need to hold, hang around people that are pulling you forward rather than pulling you back. And I think the, the two most, cru two most crucial um, levers for success is proximity and accountability. Um, proximity to the people who are doing what you want to do um, and accountability by someone uh, who you respect. Uh, I think both of those two things. Now, it's very simple. And I was talking to my father-in-law about this the other day because um, I did an Instagram reel on this. He's like, oh, I don't know if it's true. And I was like, mate, like you're 73 and he's like had a good life and like enjoys experiences. And I was like, no one, none of your mates are poor, right? Mm. Like they aren't. And he's like, question it for a second. I was like, well, they, they aren't because, you know, you like doing nice things. And you want to travel nice places. And, you know, if we look at this, then your friends also like to travel nice places and drink nice wine and do nice, and he runs half marathons. Your friends are active and fit and do great stuff like that. And it's like, what we, the reason why that is because if someone wasn't financially, you know, okay, then he wouldn't be able to do the experiences with them. And this comes down to us as well. Like if all your friends are making say $500,000, for example, let's just say, let's pick a random number and say 500,000 and you're making 100,000. Now there'll be a time where they start, you know, 
doing stuff that you can't afford to do. So you either, you know, find a friendship group who is making a similar-ish income level um, and do those things, or you'll start to make more money and do those things of the 500,000. Or if all your friends are marathon runners and you sit on the couch, you'll start running. And you'll start moving more because all of a sudden, every single time you sit around with your mates and they're talking about these runs they did and how they hiked to the top of the mountain and how great that run was down in Bustleton or Port Macquarie or Gold Coast Marathon. And they're talking about not only the runs that they've done, but the future runs that they're coming up and you're just sitting there. Okay. You'll start running because as humans, we want to fit in. Like we want to fit into those, the people around us. If, if you're, all you do is talk, you go to the pub and talk about the local footy team or the, the Eagles or, you know, Collingwood or whatever it is, and that's where your conversations go and you're talking about what other people are doing, then that's normally your friends as well. So I, I think we have to understand, it's like if you, your group of friends aren't pulling you forward, you need to find, and you want to be better and you want more out of life, you want to try and find a group of people that you can fit in with. And this can be online and this can also be in person. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. But you want to find people where they're pulling you forward in life towards the best version of you. And you're like, oh, these guys run like half marathons and they meet up around the world a couple of times a year and do this. It's like, I don't know if I can do that. It sounds like a challenge. It sounds pretty cool though. I want to try and interact with those people because they're going to, then I will become a runner. I am a runner or I'm going to do high rocks. I'm going to do it in Sydney and Perth and I'm going to challenge myself because these guys do it. Um, It's like, yeah, like that will make you work harder Mm. and become better. I think, you know, we have to understand, you know, you will rise to the, to the temperature, you will rise to the level of your friendships or you fall to the lowest level of the friendship as well. Mm. So I'm not saying get rid of your friends. I'm just saying that if you want to become better, maybe find people who are doing the things that you want to do and either pay to be a part of that group or you might be lucky enough to be a part of, find that you can't, don't have to pay and you're part of that group as well and you can start moving forward because they'll pull you along for the journey. No one wants you to do worse. People who are doing better than you never won't shame you. They'll try and pull you along and unless you find all the reasons why you can't. But if you do the stuff that we've already talked about so far in this podcast today and you adopt those behaviors and those habits and that mindset and then you find this group, man, they'll be like, man, let's do it. Let's, let's fucking get onto it. And they'll rip you along for runs and you'll start questioning yourself and your inner bitch will talk up and then you'll say, shut up inner bitch and you kept going. People will respect that. They'll also run a little bit slower for you just because they want you to start doing it. Like they'll adapt their stuff for you because they want to pull you along because winners want other people to win contrary to your belief. Like they want you to win. Um, you know, it's the losers that don't want you to win. The people doing worse than you. They're the ones that are trying to hold you back and pull you down. I think it's a very crucial thing for you to understand. Yeah, and it is a hard thing because then it's like you got to let go of maybe some old friendships. And we've talked time and time again about the, you know, the how hard that can be. But at the same time, you've got to ask yourself, do I want to be like these people? Is this who I really want to surround myself with long term? And it's like you could be the spark and the inspiration that make brings all of your friend group into a better place, or you could, you know, you could excel past them right and you could break free of where they're at um and that's something that um that to be honest my brother had to do as well there was a there was a group of friends really good friends of his that he had for a, you know from high school on really long time um and they were there's absolutely like there is nothing wrong with them they were all great guys they were like extra like big brothers to me as i was growing up as well um you know really really kind awesome fun but they're they're like a lot of what they did was centered around you know drinking and you know drugs and that kind of stuff on the weekend and you know mostly recreationally but that's kind of what they would do um and for kim he's like he wanted to grow his business and he and that was a big path for him he wanted to grow a business bigger um he wanted to travel the world he wanted to do all these other things and it's like just by the nature of choosing to do different things he spent less and less and less time with these guys and there was just it was there was no you know big conversation of oh you guys are too lame for me and you drink and i don't want to do that it's like he just grew apart and he chose to go in a different direction and yeah he'll still always be you know friends with them if you see him on the street or you know for a birthday here and there or whatever but it's just it's not who he centrally spends a lot of his time with Um, and as a result he doesn't spend every weekend drinking because he's got to get his recovery and his health on on point because he's got to work long hours the next day and he's got to focus and he's going to be on point for his calls and his clients and all that sort of stuff so you've just got to be aware of it. it doesn't have to be this big ceremonial letting go it's just like hey you know what i'm probably not going to come to the 
the pub anymore. That's not really where I want to um, focus my energy. I'm going to start going for walks around the around the suburb or go for runs and jogs or whatever. I'm going to get up early on Saturdays and do the um, you know do park run, right? Maybe that's what you, you might be that inspiration for them. But even if not, you've got to put your needs above the comfort of other people. Mate, I, I completely agree. I think it's not it's not like a rip the band-aid off catch later never like deleting your phone number kind of thing like i think that's that's but that's what people think all it is is just spending a little bit less time with the people that are doing the things you don't want to do and spending a little bit time with the with the people who are doing the things you do want to do and then slowly the time will be more weighed towards or weighted towards the people doing the things you want to do and then you'll become one of those people because again like proximity to people who are doing the things you want to do like your vegans are a big thing right and shout out to all the vegans out there like you really live by your beliefs um so you know go you but it's like you know i, I think with this they're very bright bright line rules i don't eat animals or things that come from animals right like it, it's very simple for the vegans so if you want it, it's easier okay if, if you're if you look at the vegans most of the time it's not like I'm a vegan and all my friends are carnivores, right? And they only eat steak and you go out to dinner with all your mates who only eat steak all the time and you're the one vegan in the crowd and you're eating some broccoli and you're going out to like a steak restaurant. That's generally not how it is. Generally, what happens is you're a vegan, you look for vegan groups, you go out to dinner to vegan restaurants with your vegan mates because there's bright line rules around it, right? And because you're modeling success, right? And you surround yourself with other vegans. Why? Because it's easier. It's not because you hate the car. Well, you probably do hate the carnivals. Uh, but it's like <laughs> when you're looking at this, it's just it's, it's easier to be around those people doing what you want to do, right? Because it's easier for you to align your behaviors with that. And that's exactly the same thing. If you want to be a fit dad, it's easier to perform your behaviors. I know it's not bright line, but you can make it if you want to. Um, and we're going to talk about this in a second. But if you can hang around with those people and be a proximity of those people doing things you want to do, it's easier for you to do it because your conversations will be around those things. Um, your future goals will be around those things. Your accomplishments that you get to chat around about will be around those things. I think it's, it's an easy thing. And then the accountability you know, it's, it's just showing up saying, yes, I did this to someone who's actually going to hold you, hold the mirror up to your face and be truthful with you. Um, the next point is like your ego is killing you. I think, you know, if you're still listening to this and you're saying like bullshit to everything we're saying so far, like your ego is probably killing you, right? Like it is because you haven't found a hint of truth in what we're saying. Or you're saying, oh, that's not me or that doesn't, um, that doesn't apply to me because I'm different and my circumstance is different. Well, go up. Go up two points, the reasons and why you can't, right? Re listen to that part of the podcast again because it's like you're, you have to be humble, right? Like it doesn't matter if in your business standpoint, like you can learn from anyone. Oh, but I'm making more money than him. It's like, yeah, but he might be a bad communicator. You know, they might put their... You know, you go to a coffee shop, it's like, oh, this person isn't worthy of me watching on how they do it. But maybe the detail in what the way they make a coffee is something you can learn from on how you can execute your business. You have to be humble enough in every landscape to learn from anyone. And again, um, there was a talk at the school down here um, about... Um, career paths in children and we're talking about uh, the mottos in the school and the school motto was striving for excellence and they wanted to change the school motto and they're like not everyone can strive for excellence this is what some people said what? and my wife's like what do you mean and then no but no but this is this is what we're looking at right be like what about a janitor a janitor a janitor can't strive for excellence and lives like a janitor can clean the room as the best janitor in the world cleans a room you can be excellent at making sandwiches. You can be excellent at wiping toilets. Like your excellence is upon you. So again, that person's ego was killing them, right? Because they couldn't have the humility to understand that some people love cleaning. Like there's a chick on Instagram and TikTok that literally goes for free. I've seen her. I found it quite disgusting, but she goes for free to the worst places in Florida and like cleans their houses for them. Obviously she gets money through YouTube um, uh, from the views and all the rest of it. But like, it's crazy, but she loves to do it. She loves to see the transformation in the house. Some people just love fucking cleaning and they want to be the best at the world of cleaning like you need to go i can learn from anyone i need to be humble enough to know that you know maybe i need to do things differently 
your bro split, you're doing an hour a day in the gym or you're going and you're only eating vegan, maybe you need to be humble enough to know that, okay, maybe a steak's okay for me. Um, or you need to be humble enough. It's like, maybe like, oh, like, like running is the worst thing. Maybe you should try and go for a run. Like, that's okay. Like I didn't used to like running. Why? Because I was like a hundred kilos. Okay. So I was anti-running and that's my ego was holding me back. So I, I think you have to be malleable but you can only be malleable with your approach to achieving your goals if you have the humility to understand that maybe I'm not always right. And I 100% in my household know that I am not always right. Um, <laughs> 100% of the time, I am not right. Um, so I think it's, it's really understanding, guys, like you, you need to embrace humility as much as you possibly can. Mm, yeah, I completely agree. I think there's a great book, I think it's by Ryan Holiday called The Ego is the Enemy. Um, he's the same guy who wrote the book, The Obstacle is the Way. Highly recommend both of those reads. Very, very good. The, um, the, the biggest thing about the ego is it's everything that's outside of the self right? Like the real true self. Mm. So it's like all of those other little projections and ideas and this and stuff. And this is where you get defensive. And this is where you get, you know, you hold on to these ideas of who you think you are. And once you can let go of that and just be like, I would say the biggest thing with getting in touch with who you really are, as opposed to your ego is being present. And it's again, why we recommend things like meditation and journaling and awareness. So you can have some mindfulness practice where you can just get in touch with who you really are and become a human being rather than a human doing and just constantly just doing the next thing the next thing the next thing and then your your reactions come from an emotional place and and a defensive place as opposed to who you really are so um highly highly recommend those books but also just being aware of when it comes to your ego it's not just like oh big bravado oh, i i fucking lift all these weights and i've got a big ego it's like it's 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 not just that it's about the the defensiveness when someone brings up something that's a sensitive subject the willingness to not be vulnerable and real with who you are it's just you've just got to get more in touch with who you are what is important to you uh, and, and go from there. I completely agree. And the next point, guys, is you live in the gray area. And I think, um, <laughs> I think there needs to be some form of obsession when you're starting out on an, a journey to change your life um, because you're trying to learn a skill set, you're trying to apply habits, you're trying to divorce yourself from your prior habits. And you know, some people... Um, call that obsession I call it discipline um, but you need to be involved um, and like you know really focus on the the task at hand if it's important to you and this this doesn't require this um, stops it being gray right a lot of people are gray when trying to achieve their goals and it's like oh I'm gonna start eating healthier it's like well if you can't specifically tell me what eating healthy means then how do you know if you're eating healthy or not eating healthy how do you know if you're achieving your goals or not achieving your goals? Like you, it needs to be black and white. It's like, I'm going to hit my calories from now on or a black and white. I'm going to be vegan, very black and white. Um, or I'm going to be carnivore, a very black and white. You need to, and I, I believe this is for a certain set of time, you need to live in the black and white before you get to the gray. It needs to be somewhat bright line rules. Because you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to completely change the trajectory of your life. It was going in one direction. And to stop that, it needs to be going in the other direction. So it needs to be, the pendulum needs to swing for a period of time for, then, for it to come back into the middle. So if it swings far across and like you're tracking your food and you, you know, you're being super disciplined for then you to lose the weight and for it to swing back into the middle and for you to find your balance, but then now your balance comes once you've achieved your goal. And I think, you know, you, you need to be black and white. It needs to be, oh, you know, like we said, like for me, it's like 24 minutes a day this year, working out every day for 24 minutes. I pulled my hamstring yesterday, going sprints. So I need to adapt today's training sessions to still do a minimum of 24 minutes. It'll probably take me 10 days to recover from my hamstring. I'll run slow and I'll do upper body stuff in the meantime. But we go from you know, essentially pathway A to B to C to D and we keep going down. I need to be humble enough. I need to do some more stretching. I need to do some more movement exercises to make sure I don't, this doesn't happen again. But it's, you know, it's a mistake, right? I'm glad that it happened now instead of July when I want to try and hit a PB for the marathon. But it's like, I think we have to look at, it's like it's being humble enough to go through this, right? It's so crucial. But it's black and white for me. Did you do 24 minutes today or didn't you? It's very clear, yes or no. So I think at the start, you need to go, well, my lower limit is 10 minutes a day. 
at least 10 minutes every single day, or maybe it's 14 minutes every single day. 14 minutes is 1% of your day. I will commit 1% of my day every single day to my health and fitness, to be, for, to training. That's one, do you commit 1% of your year to training? I think if you want to be on this planet for a long period of time, you probably should commit 1% of your year to training, which is 1% of your day, which is 14 minutes. And I think that is a minimum threshold that everyone should make. And that could be alternating 10 squats, 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups. You put a timer on, you do that for 14 minutes straight. That's okay. You could just run out seven minutes, run slash walk seven minutes in one direction. You run slash walk seven minutes back, right? It, it can be so simple. It doesn't have to be black and white as far as you must follow the best program in the world. But I think it has to be black and white as far as like, what is your behavior around training? What is your behavior around um, food? What is your behavior around sleep? You know, we watch one episode every single night, right? Together as a couple, me and Liv, you know, before, like as part of our wind down routine. We don't watch two, we don't watch three, we don't watch four. Because if we, if I don't have bright line rules, I'm like, oh, this was a good one and it's a cliffhanger. And then I watch the next one and then the next one's normally a cliffhanger. And all of a sudden it's like 11.30 at night and I'd get to bed and then I can't wake up in the morning and then it deteriorates my morning routine because my, night ro- my nighttime routine was fucked up. And this is how it is. But I have bright line rules. And because I have bright line rules, I look after my self-care, which allows me to stay focused on the things that are important to me. So stop living in the gray um, and start making bright line black or white rules for yourself. I completely agree. I think especially as you're getting started, you need to like, you don't know moderation yet. Moderation is earned, right? Moderation is um, earned by years and months of dedication and getting it well done. And then you slowly trickle it in and you slowly introduce it. If you start out, you're, like, you're already eating in what your idea of moderation is, right? You're like, oh, but I only get takeaway two or three times a week. It's like, cool, that's liable to blow out. Like if you get any negative momentum in there, it's easy to roll back the other way. So if you keep everything focused on the positive and everything focused on moving forward and you go, cool, I just don't do this shit for six to eight weeks, right? This is just off the table for six to eight weeks. That's all it takes for you to get in that positive momentum and then for it to become easier to do the things that will move you forward than it becomes to do the things that won't move you forward. And that's as simple as it needs to be. You just need to have, as Kerr was saying, that lie in the sand, go, cool, for the next six to eight weeks, I'm not getting takeout or I'm not drinking on the weekend, all right? It's like, oh, cool, I can have a glass or two during the week and I know that doesn't fucking roll me out of my cycle. That's it. I'm just not drinking on the weekend and I'm not getting takeaway because those are the little things that slow down your momentum enough that make it easier for you to go backwards than it does for you to go forwards. So having the the real clear delineation as to when you start and what you're going to be doing um, and then you can start to earn some moderation because you're in far more momentum and it becomes so much easier to stick to things once you've got momentum. Yeah, man, I think, you know, Jocko Jocko Willink says it's like discipline equals Mm. freedom. But I think that the people want the freedom without the discipline. So you have to go through the discipline part first to then get to the freedom part, which is more freedom of choice. Um, The the number seven and the number eight, guys, we're going to briefly move through these. I, I think, you know, the thing that's holding you back is you just lie to yourself constantly. You know, you lie to yourself every single day. You say like, oh, I'm not, I'm not fat, like I'm just big boned or I have a slow metabolism um, or obesity runs in my family. It's like, dude, no one runs in your family, right? Like that's the problem. Like the thing that happens inside your family is bad habits run in your family. That's what actually happens in your family. You know, your, your parents did a certain set of behaviors. Now you do a certain set of behaviors. Your kids will do a certain set of behaviors. Like someone needs to break the cycle of poor habits to break the cycle of overweight or obesity. Mm. I think that's the biggest thing. Like it's, it's not the weight gene, it's the habit gene that's actually causing you to you know, be overweight or have low energy or have low muscle mass or have a high fat mass or whatever you're saying. Like you just, it all comes down from the ha- daily habits, but you're telling yourself or you're trying to find the reasons why you aren't. You say you're too old. Oh, it's, I'm too old to change my life. It's like, dude, we have guys like 60 years old, like dropping 20, 30 kilos, like becoming the best granddad you know, out there. Not just fit dad, it's like fit granddad. Um, because they said, you know, they drew that line in the sense, like I want to still keep up with my kids. I want like my, my, I'm going with my father-in-law run a half marathon. He's seventh half marathon next weekend. He's doing the half mar- He's doing the half marathon in Gold Coast when I run the marathon. He's already planning things, but he's going skiing at the end of the year because he's like, I want to do this with my grandkids. And I think 
you know, when you're not doing it for your kids, you will be doing it for your grandkids and you need to draw in the line in the sand. I don't care if you're 40, 50, 60, 30. It's like the, the time is now, right? And, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the time. You have 1% of your day. Commit to 1%. Like that, that's it. 1%, 14 minutes. Like commit to one thing. It's like, stop lying to yourself. Oh no, I eat well. Like so many people come to us telling us they eat. Oh no, it's not, my nutrition is not bad. I eat fairly well. It's like, no, stop lying to yourself. You didn't gain 20 kilos by just because you eat well and sit down a bit too much. Mm. Like that didn't happen. You over consumed calories. You know, I, if you think you eat well and you're 20 kilos overweight, you don't have the education around nutrition to understand what eating well and not eating well is. And instead of saying eating well, it's saying I gained weight because I don't understand nutrition. Like that's much easier. And that's not a lie, right? Rather than saying I don't have times to exercise, say losing weight is not a priority in my life, right? That, that's fine. You need to change the words you say because lying to yourself doesn't solve the problem. You're like losing weight and being a role model to my kids isn't a priority to me. And then you, that's a bit of a, a straight faced mirror holding the mirror up type of uh, moment it's like well i can i commit one percent of my day well yes you can because i know you can because there's people in your situation out there right now who have the same amount of things that some of them have seven kids supposedly uh, and they still find one percent of their day to get it done like dude like mind blown seven kids is that's, insane that's anyone who has nine kids like let me know that is a lot man uh, you, know, you probably lose weight just because you're trying to chase your kids all the time you can't afford to eat, um, eat them but it's like <laughs> exactly you force calorie restriction but i think you know you actually have to get honest with yourself honest with yourself on one how much weight you have to lose honest with yourself on yes you actually have to do this because it's a longevity and having compelling reason because most people don't want to get real with themselves on why they actually want to do it oh i just want to be a bit better and be a bit healthier it's like dude that's not the reason like when times are tough that's not going to keep pushing you forward you actually need to have a compelling reason and you have to not lie to yourself to actually get down to the truth of it. And I think, you know, if you stop this number seven and stop the lies, oh, just one glass of beer, like that won't, like it could hurt. If it's not, if it's like something you said you weren't going to do and then you do it, that is a lie, right? Stop lying to yourself. Just follow through with your word. Have integrity, self-respect. Like it is disrespectful to you oneself if you don't do what you said you're going to do. And that is eroded daily. You know, one little thing becomes a fucking massive thing over time. Yeah, no, it's, it, lying to yourself is, a lot of people don't think of it that way, but it is. It's like, you've just got to get into the truth. I, yeah, I always talk about this. It's like, you're not busy. You just haven't got your priorities in order. And if your priorities are in the order that they have to be, stop whinging and bitching like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. No, you're choosing to do other things. And that's okay. If that is your actual choice. If it's not your choice, stop fucking picking other things, right? So, and that's, and that's the long short of it. Just make a decision to say, this is either a priority for me right now or it's not. And it's okay to go through phases where fitness is less of a priority. It comes down to, for a lot of people, thinking that 14 minutes a day isn't going to get them their goal. It is, right? It can, definitely can. It Depending is. on your goal, it fucking can. For most guys, if you just want to lose a bit of extra weight, yeah. 14 minutes, even if it's just 14 minutes extra of walking, it can. Yeah, you got to control your diet, but guess what? You're going to fucking eat anyway. You're going to eat anyway, so you might as well eat yep. slightly less. It takes you less time. Oh, my God, I'm so busy. Well, you've got three minutes less every meal you're eating because you're eating 10 less mouthfuls. Boom. Fucking, I've just saved you 15 minutes out of your day. That 15 minutes you can go for a run, it's like a compound effect. It's like a self-reinvesting time. The less you eat, the more you move, it all balances out. So you, get, um, you can get the results doing that. But a lot of people just think, oh, I've got to do these big hour-long workouts and I've got to sweat and I've got to... Do, 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 do. It's like, no, you can go for a fucking run, walk, jog for seven minutes there, seven minutes back. Guess what? Once you get faster and faster, it'll all of a sudden become only 10 minutes and then you can go even further for another five minutes and then back again. Like, And then, and then you, you're scaling it up. So until you're just sprinting up and down the street over and over again really, really fast, right? It'll, it'll, it'll hit that point. But... You've got to stop lying to yourself. You've got to realize you can prioritize this stuff and you can get the results with what you're looking for. If you're not 100% sure about that, you've obviously got to reach out to us. Let us know. We can book a call and have a chat. But the final thing is you don't have a goal. 
You don't have something that you're working towards because if you don't, if you, all of this doesn't matter if you're not actually working towards something. If you've not got, I need to be the fittest version of myself and your goal can be physical in terms of I want to uh, perform a certain thing. I want to look a certain way. It can be um, just emotional and feeling based. Like I feel energized. I don't feel sluggish anymore. All of this stuff can be a part of a goal, but you've got to have something that you're working towards. For me, right now, my goal is that high rocks in September. That's a big one for me I'm working towards. So I know right, I'm going to get rid of my excess fat. I'm going to work on building some muscle, building up some endurance, doing those workouts to get prepped for it, right? Easy. It's got me far more motivated in my training because I've got something that I'm working towards. If you have nothing you're working towards, none of the other stuff here matters because you don't even know why the fuck you're doing it in the first place. So have a reason, have a why, have a goal that you're working towards. Otherwise, you're just going to be pissing into the wind being like, oh, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Well, no shit. You've got no fucking goal. You've got no destination in, I, this, in the sat-nav. Oh, dude, 100%. Like, you know, 366 days will pass this year either way, right? I think at the end of the year, you got to think at the end of the year like a... Yeah, like people say I want to get healthy, but I don't have a goal, okay? If you don't have a goal, like a certain amount of weight loss or an event you're training for, um, at the end of the year, you can either be at the top of the mountain and planting your flag at the top of the mountain saying, I achieved my goal, or you can be just wandering aimlessly around the mountain for the whole year and never get anywhere because that's what it's like. You know, when we have a goal that's specific, we're more focused with our behaviors because we're trying to do it for a specific event, whether it be weight loss or, or a performance-based mm -hmm. event. So we have a timeline on this and we're spe specific around all of it, right? It's measurable, like the smart goals, all the rest of it. And there's a bigger why behind it. Now, I don't believe in the realistic part of the smart goals because I feel like people get too realistic um, and it doesn't push them enough either. Uh, but I, I think if you look at it, have a goal that will stretch you Okay, have a goal that you're working towards that will require a certain set of behaviors repeated continuously for a certain set of time. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the year, rather than walking around aimlessly around the mountain, you get to plant your flag. You get to, to, to get to the top of that mountain. It's like, yeah, I did that. You look back this year, it's like, fuck, I ran some half marathons. I did a high rocks. I lifted some weight. I lost some weight. Um, I, I, I did good. It wasn't just another year that passed of mediocrity. It was a year of excellence and it changed the trajectory or it continued my current trajectory going to the, where I want to be, which is towards my potential on this planet. Now, if you don't have some great goals, then you need to set someone. If you need someone to help you set some goals, that's what we do as well. And we help create the plan for you from where you are to where you want to be. And we help you close the gap. Okay, so exactly the, what the set of behaviors are there and you can be in proximity to us and be accountable by us to making sure that we actually achieve those goals. We won't let you talk shit to yourself. We won't, we'll make sure that you gain some humility because we're going to do some things differently. You will live in a black and white area for a period of time. You definitely will become anti-fragile and your inner bitch will like pretty much be silenced because uh, that's what we need to do to get to the best version of you. And we will help you get there every step of the way. You have to go to fit-dad.club, book in a call. We'll jump on the call with you and we'll talk about it all. So that's fit-dad.club. You can comment below this um, podcast and you know let us know what you thought of the podcast. Um, negative, positive, I don't care. Rate and review it. Um, you know All the negative, all the positive um, comments help our algorithm. So help the algorithm push this podcast out there. I don't care. We can argue with you as much as you want in a positive or negative light I don't mind because at the moment you know remember if you say anything to me I don't give a fuck because it's like water off a duck's back because I choose what those words mean um Chase you got anything else to finish off this nah, day no nah, just uh just nope. go out there fix these eight things and go live your best life and uh, let us know how it goes for you that's it guys keep striving to your potential talk Peace to you out. next week